Hello and welcome to Demon Interviews, episode 96. I'm your host, Springy, with my Springtrap head on. I'm the co-host, Deadman16 on YouTube, and aka the Real Adams 20 on TikTok. And joining us today is our very special guest. Hello, hello. My name is Noah, better known as Noah the Ark on both the TikToks, the Instagrams, and the YouTubes. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Um, and if you want to find our lovely person, our lovely guest for today, my brain was not working. I've not done this in a long time. Anywho, um, it will, his, all of his names will be in the description below. And if you want to follow his YouTube, we are also following him so you can just, you know, noodle your way in there and do all that fun stuff. But it'll also be there as well, but you get my point. Anywho, first question of the day is going to be a very serious question. A hard-hitting okay. question. A personal to the hard question. Would okay, you... I'll admit that was me in those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I did straddle John Stavos. I did close like him. There's me in those photos. Ten close like John Stamos. Okay, that caught us off guard so bad. I love it. <laughs> Just like the how. Okay, but the real question is: Would you rather go on a hike or eat Cheetos? Okay, that is a hard hit question. Um, I'll have the lasagna. Ah. Mm. <laughs> Works. Cheese and cheese makes sense to me. <laughs> sense. Sorry about that. I couldn't help myself. Ah, uh, you're fine. Oh, don't, don't worry. This is a complete. How God. dare you? This is a hundred percent serious. <laughs> Can't you tell that we are a hundred percent serious <laughs> all time? Oh, no, we're not. No, we're Excuse not. Excuse me. <laughs> we yeah. are never. Coming from the guy with the giant bunny head on. Um, yeah. You know, odds are, there's probably going to be some people coming out just saying, wow, this Noah the Ark guy is a real jerk. Not okay. getting the whole comedy thing. Fine, you're fine. No, you're fine. Right. Woo! Okay. Okay, uh, for my question, obviously you're from TikTok. And, uh, do you do cosplays? Like, what do you do on TikTok? Exactly. Hmm. Well... I do a variety of things. Primarily, I do cosplay, but I also like to do a lot of original comedic stuff outside of cosplay. A lot of which with some of my original characters. Guys like Agent Bob, Kamen Rider Scorpion, Dr. Osman, all of them. So I guess I am kind of a cosplayer, but I'm also a comedian. Dennis, cosplayer Jesus, comedian. Hurry. <laughs> Cosmedian. Cosmedian, there we go. Pat and Penny. Yes. Anyway, uh, Hurry, so... change the lists. Go to a different <laughs> list. Hurry. <laughs> okay, that's completely my bad because I my brain was cooking, as you all can see. Uh, but the next question is: Have you ever been interviewed like this before? No, I have not. This is the first time I've been interviewed. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're happy to be your first. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll okay. into, win into windows. Dennis. What? Any, anywho, your, your turn. That's all I was saying. <laughs> and you see why that I've been dealing with this guy for, we've been doing this for a show for a year and a half. And a half, this, at least. That's nice. Half, at least. See what you got to deal with, my man. Yeah. Nice. Uh, people I'm noxious weird. little asshole. Anyway. <laughs> um, anyway. Um... What is one thing you want people to know about your your characters you cosplay? Hmm, the characters I cosplay, um, that I'll generally cosplay anyone that interests me. Like, I have done cosplays for characters from shows and games I haven't even played. Like, just a few days ago, I did Yakko from Animaniacs, having never once seen a single episode of the show in my entire life. Yeah. Yeah, so I generally like to do any characters that interest me, you know? The character looks interesting, looks like they'd be fun to do. That's generally what I want to do as a cosplayer. Cosplay the characters that interest me, even if I don't know what they're from. Awesome. 
Yeah, that's that's something between me and this guy or whoever he is on the screen on the, on the video. Um, <laughs> um, we he and I just do our our cosplays on just based upon our imagination and what we use called as our OCs. And hmm. there's like different variety you can create, especially there's on the type that you want to do. You like you can do games, movies, and shows like and all of that. But the cool thing is, is to come up with some ideas that you can come on for yourself and for others to do as like something you can do as like a collab with. Because I've been collabing with this dude for years. On my screen, he's like right up there. <laughs> um, we've been doing the collaboration for OC work. Like whenever he does like videos, like the one video <laughs> that still makes me laugh every time is when when he told me to do this duet for a long time. And I've been, <laughs> I've been busy with work and then tired of that like i don't have the time but the ones were just like send those kai send those kai ah and don't do kai come on that was just like bring find someone for the show huh find someone for the show oh i'm too lazy to do it cuz i don't have a show it's like yeah. a laughter as if we were doing it genius yeah, but it's because we did it in our original OCs together because that's where they two met and that's where we created the show. It's based upon our OCs and I did mine as Draco, who's my demon, and so on and so forth. If those who have seen our OCs and have learned the stories about it right by now, you go check it out in our other videos. And then nice. this was the, the skeleton man and have then... the conversation. That's true. <laughs> And we made two just, videos purposely so we don't have this whole conversation every single time we have a guest on. <laughs> just, go, just go check our very first two videos, we guys. We made two videos so we purposely don't have this whole conversation. <laughs> okay. And but. then, yeah. Oh, I got stuff. Maybe this is how we anyway. If you want to hear the rest of that story, go to his episode, which is 90. <laughs> I think it's just 90, actually. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'll, I'll just roll a little bit at this point. Um, the next question is huh? going to be Do you have any other cosplays planned to do that you're able to tell us about without giving you a small fee of $5 on Patreon? Hmm. Not really. August is kind of a low month for me because I'm focusing on saving up money because, you know, you can't cosplay. And without paying bills. That's kind of the most important thing. So I'm just trying to spend the month of August saving much but money I can, not spending as much. So I don't really have anything planned right now. Mm -hmm. I got plans, but I like to keep them on the hush hush. Makes sense. Understandable. Don't Makes worry. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I now yeah, just realized like... that by stating what month we're in, that's going to severely date the video anytime someone goes back and watches it. I think this is coming out in August. Thanks. So for the record, the date is August 6th, 2020. Yeah. As of right now. I think this is yes. probably come out. As of right now. Late now the video is not dated. Yeah. Late August, I think this comes out. I don't know. Okay. I think it's the third You're week of August. Eh. Comes out. Yeah. <laughs> if my math is wow. correct. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Dan. Math. Math. Best thing in the world. Anyway, uh, is TikTok the only place you do your cosplays? Um, pretty much, yeah. It's largely the only place I do it. I've been posting more frequently on my Instagram lately, but for now, TikTok is the sole place where I've been doing my cosplay stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> well, hair. Um, <laughs> Now we have to do the stereotypical YouTube thing of don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns for our lovely guests here, put them in the description, not in the description, that's my job, in the comments below. <laughs> and if we ever get them back onto the show, we will ask them your questions, yeah. as long as they're polite. <laughs> um, but the next question is going to be, favorite holiday? Favorite holiday? Hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I'm going to have to say October 30th because that's National Candy Corn Day. 
I love candy corn, and I'm not joking. October 30th is literally National Candy Corn Day. Oh, so that's wow. my favorite holiday. Awesome. Yeah. Did not yeah. yeah, I never knew that the actual was a day of, like, candy corn day. I actually would like to have that day one day. <laughs> yeah, first, because everything's on, ha- on sale. Yeah. That's- I mean, I even learned that fact from the Food Network back when I had a culinary phase. Oh, it makes sense. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, bro. Um, how are you and some of your characters you cosplay alike, and how are they disliked, like different? Well, that's the nice thing, Dennis. I do not cosplay characters that are in any way similar. I like to cosplay characters that I know I can take to a completely different extreme. Like, for example, if you were to put Mike Schmidt, Nightmare, my Michael Afton, Metaton, and Sans all in a room together, all of my cosplays, they're completely different people who would probably start fighting each other. And yeah. that's, that's generally what I like to do. I like to cosplay characters that are not the same at all and are just completely different people. Because then that means I get to play them any way I want. Awesome. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. fun. That's fun. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. I mean, I've been doing tech talk for about five years now. Just musically? Yeah. Musically, I've been cosplaying for that long. Yeah. Press The I next know. thing we're going to go into is since it does brought up the mention of TikTok and how long you've been on how long have you been on it? How how long have you been on the app and what first made you go on to that app instead of I don't know something uh, else. Well that's a surprising thing. I've only been on TikTok for a year. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I started back in July of twenty nineteen. It all started when I ran into Mythicality Cosplays on Instagram. And they also interview Miss Vitality Cosplays. Go check out that video. But anyways, <laughs> I saw their bendy and I was like, whoa, that's a cool cosplay. So I was just like, hey, I love this cosplay. It looks fantastic. And they're like, thank you. I post more regularly on TikTok than I do Instagram. So check me out there. And internally, I was like, oh, no. Because <laughs> like so many people, I grew up, like so many people, I grew up with Vine. And yeah. when Vine shut down, I got a little salty about that. So I viewed apps like TikTok as cheap imitators, imposters to the throne, you might say. So I didn't exactly have a desire to get TikTok at first. But I also yeah. still wanted to see this person's content. So I was just like, okay, fine, I'll get it. And I got it and I followed them. And then I just thought, screw it. I'll just upload one video. Just one. Just, just one. one. It's like, TikTok's like a drug. You just say, just one time. And then, next thing you know, you have thousands of videos and tens of thousands of followers. Yeah. Except, unlike drugs, TikTok is completely safe. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you could gain money it, only if it's a penny a month. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Except, except when you go live, because TikTok only takes about 75% of your gifts. That's yeah. right. Penny. That might change when Microsoft takes over. You never know. Never know. True. I um, oh, that- yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. you just it's your turn, Dennis. Yes, I'm sorry. I, 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 I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm doing the brain again. Anyway, uh, did you create any of your cosplays for TikTok, or did you already have them? Um, I actually created all of them for TikTok. Before that, I only made cosplays for Indie PopCon 2017 and 2018. But when I started doing TikTok, I found myself starting to want to make more cosplays. Yeah. And, you know, every single cosplay you see on TikTok was made for TikTok. From Mike Schmidt all the way to Yakko, my most recent cosplay premiere. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the next question is, it might be like, trying, you know, picking kids, but... Which one would you, would you, how much, which one do you like doing better? There we go. That's how you word it. Oh. Doing cosplays or original characters? Hmm. That is a tough question, actually, because I actually don't have a favorite. 
You see, with doing original characters, yeah, I'm creating their own personalities, but when I do already established characters, I like to take their established traits and kind of amplify them. Like, for example, Nightmare from FNAF 4. When you see him, you don't really know much about him because he's just this thing, this black shadow that's stalking you in the halls. Then when Ultimate Custom Night came out and gave him some voice lines, these sinister voice lines, I thought, I can work with this. And he's turned into this very sinister and dark mastermind, puppet master, the guy behind the curtain, so to speak. The man behind the man behind the slaughter. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and with Metaton, you know, I've always seen people playing up Metaton's femininity, you know, like yeah. his feminine traits. I thought, eh, that's nice, but I wonder what happened if I played Metaton up more as a flamboyant drag queen. Something like that. Like a flamboyant drag queen game show host, because he is a game show host. Yeah. So that's what I went with, and that's what makes Metaton so fun to do, because he's my interpretation of the character. So I can't really decide if I like doing original characters or pre-existing characters more. So once again, I'll have the lasagna. Awesome. Okay, so two orders of lasagna, that's $80,000. Uh, <laughs> first to mail it. <laughs> It'd still be fresh. Uh, all, just like, all of them. Oh, I'm okay. calling my lawyers now. <laughs> Bonjour. We? Oui? Say no. They will be suing you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually, have anything. Actually, oh. random fun fact that a lot of people on TikTok already know, um, I actually pop the Joy-Cons off of my Switch and use it as a FNAF security monitor when I do Mike Schmidt. Oh yeah, that, that's that's really creative. I, I Yeah, I know. I use like, like a Kindle, I think, for like whenever I did that. Yeah, but I mean, the Switch looks so much like a security console without the Joy-Cons on. Yeah, and you, yeah. just get, you just get that random person just like, put the Nintendo Switch? It's like, Yep, it sure is. So, you know, just <laughs> random fun fact. Yeah, I oh, think that's yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, what do you think is the biggest misconception about you and your cosplays? Hmm. Well, I don't really have a misconception about me yet. Um, I guess, given the fact that I've admitted multiple times that some of the characters I cosplay aren't from things that I haven't watched or played. Some people might think, oh, well, he's just doing it to chase Cloud or to get followers, which is not true. That is not true at all. I don't have to watch a show or play a game to appreciate it. Yeah. No, I, can, I can see for what it is, and I can be like, I like this, without having to watch it or play it. Like, I do appreciate Animaniacs as a celebration of cartoon animation back from the golden age up to that point. But that's why I don't have a problem cosplaying Yakko, even though I haven't watched the show. I'm showing my appreciation for it, which I really think is what cosplay should be about, showing appreciation for what we like, even if we haven't actually watched it or played it or listened to it or yeah. read it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, that. But oh, again... Yeah. I played a Five Nights at Freddy's game, but like I'm like obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I made this whole thing. Obviously, I am. <laughs> There's a whole thing I, that goes with it. Of course, I can see. I and plus, you showed it in one of our episodes, and that's with, with Harley. Harley and Freddy. I've I've shown I've shown it before. It's on it's on the Tickety Talkies. Yeah. Um, but when we first started, like, showing people, like, you're like, I'm going to show you all this and my finest. Well, finale. you did that, too. We learned to not to yes. get up in the yes. interview. We've I learned. Know. We've grown. We've matured. Not really the last part, but we understand not to get up. <laughs> <laughs> Randomly. Um, oh, yeah. But the next question, going back on topic, um, is going to be, what is your favorite cosplay that you've done? Okay, that is a little easier to answer because I have a top three favorite <laughs> cosplays I like to do. You know, I like a list instead of like picking one. Because as a Christian, I know about what happened to Joseph when he was favorite. He ended up in a well, and I don't want to end up in a well. Yeah. So if I was to list 
three cosplays I like to do. At number three is, well, Sans from Undertale. Mm-hmm. He was originally the cosplay I had as a goal. I was like, guys, if we reach 10,000 followers for the end of 2019, I'll cosplay Sans. And I even made a joke about it when it was getting close, just like, oh, crap, I got to cosplay Sans. Because at that point, I hadn't played Undertale. Yeah. Again, I expect to be crucified. But I have played it, and I do like the game. And over time, as Sans has evolved, he's become one of my favorite characters to do. Yeah. I love doing the makeup for him, and I love just playing this goofy skeleton boy. Pretty, pretty fun, all honesty. Um, <laughs> my other favorite cosplay to do is, of course, Mike Schmidt. He's, like, second on the list because... Mike Schmidt was actually the first cosplay I made for TikTok. Mm-hmm. All the way back when I started, I realized I have a white dress shirt. I can do Mike Schmidt. And I made a security hat. And ever since then, Mike Schmidt has been pretty much a focal point of my account. He predates even my OCs. Anyway, he's a lot of fun to do as both a cow- as like a cowardly badass, which is like how I-, I like to portray him like a Ash Williams sort of character. He can, he can get terrified at times, but he's also a badass. Like, one minute he'll be screaming at Chica, staring at the door, and the next minute he'll be whipping out a Glock on William Afton. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That is one of my TikToks. He's literally just pretending to be dead and then whips out a gun and points it right at him. It's awesome. But, yeah, and number one favorite cosplay I like to do is Nightmare. From FNAF as well. Nightmare is pretty much my magnum opus, you might say. He's come the furthest as a cosplay. You know, he's had like a lot of different upgrades. It's, if you go back and see the earliest Nightmare videos from September of last year, it looked nothing like the character. And now he looks a lot like the character from the game. And I just love doing him, portraying him as this very regal and I guess you could say eldritch god sort of he's far more powerful than even than anyone could ever imagine he as I said he's the man behind the man behind the slaughter like I just did a video of him a few days ago where he's running the list of different animatronics and stuff like talking to Vanny using that audio from Shark Tales you know the on top, there's John Leadham. You know, that audio? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's me. Audio. And there's regular fish. Yeah. yeah, and of course, since Nightmare is very aloof, like, he's not that aloof. He puts himself at second behind Purple Guy. And he puts Vanny at the bottom, and he's like, there's Whale Poo, which in this case is Balloon Boy, and then there's you. <laughs> so yep. like, and that's how I like to betray him. He is above everything else. He's yeah. so powerful, he doesn't even have to get irate. Hey, yeah. He just makes jokes like, really? And you know, that he, because of that, he's my favorite cosplay to do. Hands down. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Okay. Hands are down. One billion likes. <laughs> All right. <Uh-oh>. <laughs> I know what that's on. Um, now, here's the... The one question that we always get, and it's all about the one thing we have about TikTok. What's the best compliment you've gotten? Mmm, best compliment I've gotten. That's also a hard one, because I've gotten a lot of great compliments over the years. But the best compliment I've gotten was a duet. When, at the start of this year, you're... I messaged Mill Creates about an idea I had, which unfortunately didn't go anywhere, but they were super friendly. So one night, it was the day before I had a day off of work, I was scrolling through TikTok and I noticed that they had duetted one of my videos. And I literally could not watch the first few seconds of the video without grabbing a pillow and screaming into it. I was so happy. Because... They are, they are one of those content creators that you're most likely going to see on your For You page yeah, very yeah. early on when you get TikTok. Yeah. So to have them duet me was like the biggest compliment of all time. Yeah. 
And they even followed me back because they actually liked the duets I was making and they were switching their duets to, you know, private, you know, yeah. so only yeah. friends yeah. can do yeah. them and they don't want me to lose that ability. So that's the greatest compliment I've ever gotten on TikTok. That's awesome. That I... mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, we've we gotten broken so many times. Like the one time we've gotten... Not talk about that time right now. We're doing a show. <laughs> okay. Uh, you say that now. You, you say that now. Yeah. We'll talk about it later. We have said it a, a plethora of times. Sure. <laughs> so this, he's a now, he's said like not. 18 times. It, it, at it, this point, the interview just sits back and becomes the third wheel. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going yeah, to wait me. this out. Uh, but now. Uh, before we get into the rest of the questions, I'm going to show some of the videos that you sent in. And like I said before, I did only pick one from each cosplay that you sent. Or else right. it for three days. Because <laughs> you did send a lot, and I do appreciate that. I heavily appreciate that. Because it gave us a lot of content and left to choose to choose through. Words are great, aren't they? Of course they are. Now, your computer sound... Trying to make sure I hit all the right buttons. Okay, if the vi- if you guys ever stop hearing the videos, tell me because that means the audience can't hear. So let me hit all the correct buttons and boom. It's baby with a gun. Over. What? It's a baby with a gun. Over. I will give you 45 pounds for that gun. <laughs> or you could just have it. This is a mug. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I I had a feeling you were going to do that at the first one. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, re- the reason I actually sent that was because I wanted to use it as an example of how TikTok is so absolutely random with what goes viral. Like I'm pretty sure there are people out there saying, "Watch this video, and all your videos will go viral." And it's like you're just pulling your leg, people. You don't know what's going to happen. Like. I had no intention for this to go viral. It was just a duet that yeah. I was doing with Inky Teeth, who they also interviewed. Go check out that video, too. And it just, <laughs> it it just blew up. In the first 24 hours, it got over 10,000 views yeah. and like yeah. over 1,000 likes, which is like really, really good. And I was just blown away by uh-huh. how much it blew up because... It's such a simple video. It has no real comedic hook. It's not using any trends or trendy hashtags. And it just exploded. And that's kind of the nice thing about TikTok. You never know what's going to become extremely popular. So yeah. I'm done right now. It's crazy okay. what goes viral. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Next. What's next? What's the audio? Oh, no. Oh, did it stop? Yeah, I was going to say Yeah, yeah, see, no, see, that's what happens sometimes. Now let me just turn it off and turn it back on again, because that's how this shit works. Just one second, I'll be right back. Okie dokie, Artichoke. And while we wait for him to come back, let me tell you about sponsor for today, the Demon Interviews merch store. <laughs> that I just now set up. Because I said so. If you want to get some amazing Demon Interviews merchandise, the description below. Dennis ran off to probably grab the t-shirt that he bought. <laughs> you just, just gather talking about your merch store and had it come back. Oh, there, it just, <laughs> there it is. That is not Demon. the best example. It, because It's, it's not the best example, but it is literally a sneak peek of what it basically will look like. If yeah. I was on my tablet, I'll show you the phone case, which is... Oh, yeah, but you know anybody what? Right now. Hold on. You just gotta r- rip it off. Watch he breaks it. Watch <laughs> he breaks his new phone case. There you go. Oh, oh that's, that's some nice merch. That's yeah, a, my phone. If you want to buy it, there'll be a Demon Movies Teespring. It's in the description. Blah, blah, blah. Anywho, let's go back to the show. While Dennis right. runs back to his room. Yeah. Whatever second... I replug in my phone somewhere else because 
no problem at all. But now, let's go into the next video. Okay. Oh, shoot, it's James Charles. Not my chance. Okay. <laughs> um, that was very deliberate, by the way. I had that audio saved in my sounds because it was just so hilarious. I just like the delivery of, oh, it's James Charles. No, it's my chance. And I was doing <laughs> And I was doing Metaton just thought, this audio works for Metaton. So, you know, I did that. And <laughs> the best thing about that video is not the audio and not the cosplay, but what I also did, I actually tagged James Trolls in it. Oh. <laughs> and just in the comments, I was like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if he saw and actually liked this video? Because that seems like something Metaton would definitely do if yeah. he saw James Trolls. James Charles has not seen the video yet or liked it to my knowledge, but it's still going to happen. Mark my words. Yeah, we don't have any. <laughs> but <laughs> now we're going to the next video. Let's just hope the audio works. No props. I hope you like extra foam. <laughs> Shit got real! <laughs> <laughs> right. I actually don't have any interest. I actually don't really have anything to say about the video and making it, but it does stem from my actual real-life fear of totally spies and just how disturbingly fetishistic it is. Yeah. On all levels. Like, that is an actual fear I have, and ever since I found out about that show, I cannot escape it. It's just a part of my life. <laughs> um, yeah, I honestly don't have anything to say about that one. It's just one of those videos. It's like a filler episode of Dragon Ball Z, you know? It's just meant there to pat it out. Yeah, it makes sense. Oh, yeah. Oops. After our interview, Markiplier was hit by a bus. His last words, you don't need to look both ways when you got swag. All right, there's multiple levels to this video. Firstly, Savagey Gentleman, Savage Gentleman, one of my followers proposed that name for this clown, and I loved it so much I used it. Secondly, when I did this character, I actually said, clowns are going to make a comeback, and then the next thing I know, both masochistic cosplays and her brother Pork Cutlet do clown characters, and I start seeing more clowns on my feed, and even Inky Teeth does West the Mind from Don't Stop, and I'm like, I called it. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I called That's it. Awesome. And finally, um, I made this video after I watched The Fall of Slender Man. Forgot the name for a second. Oh. And no, I follow I followed Markiplier for a while and I have not watched one of his pinnacle videos until 2020. Yeah. And I watched it and I friggin' loved it. And I loved that line of his last words. You don't need to look both ways when you got swag. And I just <laughs> knew I had to do it. I figured Savage G would be perfect for the audio. Yeah, it works really well. Oh, yeah, it, it did, yeah. Yeah. Next one up. There can't be two Freddy's, right? Freddy! Yo. Well, now we've got two Freddy's in the room. Hello. Bonnie, oh my god, I will slap you! Wait, what's going on here? We're looking for the night guard. He's the night guard! Uh, this, I know. As, 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 you as you probably saw, this is one of my earlier videos that I'm not too jazzed about. But then again, it's also one of the first videos that actually blew up after a while. Yeah. And, you know, this was back in that awkward phase. When I was just starting, I did not have anything pre-established yet. Yeah. So I was just doing whatever was coming to mind. Random duets, you know, all that. So I'm kind of embarrassed by this video, actually. Even <laughs> though it's one of my most viewed videos. That's... And, I mean, you can, you can see why it's filmed at one time speed instead of two times speed. I'm not in any kind of cosplay, so it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. And I am yeah. not being very expressive, so it's definitely a product of an early point in my TikTok career. So, yeah. but for what it's worth, I, I'm still glad I did it. 
And as I said, it's one of my most viewed videos, so I can't really complain. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sad. Yeah. And the fun. Whoops. Up. Yeah. Oh, audio's gone. How oh, is it? Is not yep. working. No, nope, not uh, working. Curse you, Skype, and your suckiness. Technology. Curse you, technology. Curse you. So that's because I can't wait to talk about this one. Hold on. <laughs> we saw I poisoned one of our glasses, but I forgot which one. The way this dinner is going, I hope it's mine. Okay, um, I'm surprised you went with one of the one of the nightmare videos I did instead of one of the more recent ones. That's what I call this version of Nightmare because I was trying to make him look like the interpretations of Red Bear and Golden Bonnie and Golden Freddy on TikTok, all that. Yeah. But this video is where you can start to see me developing Nightmare as the character of this eldritch being who does not give a crap about anything. Yeah. Like, what's poison to him? Like, What's it going to do? Kill him? No, of course not. He's this all-powerful puppet master. So he just he just chugs that sucker back. Yeah. And this is just kind of one of the things I like when looking back on older TikToks, because it's like a timeline where you can actually see characters where you're just, like, evolving the character into what he eventually becomes. Because Nightmare hasn't exactly gone under any big character changes recently because I figured out what he was and it stuck. And with this video, you can actually see all of that starting to emerge. It's like, oh, hey, I know that Nightmare. That's no other arcs Nightmare. Yeah. You know, interesting. Yeah. Interesting tidbits. Awesome. Now we're just going to pop on into the next Up, oh, it's gone. Audio's gone. Is it gone again? Yeah. Yes. God diddly dang it. God diddly dang it. Well, you know. Computers be fun. After our interview. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You were really deep for a second that you're putting me in it. No, of course not. Just a little deeper that we'll go inside and we can stop digging. Ooh. Let me scare for a second. I thought we were digging my grave. We did. Mm. I never saw that part of the audio before. I always saw the second half. Mm. Yeah, um, that's... That is the part of the audio I actually do like using the most. Um, yeah, this character, the Mad Conductor, was created for Rain Emery's Twisted Carnival. Oh, yeah. And I don't really have anything to say about it. Because oh. it's kind of a few wounds that I don't want to really reopen. We got a sample. Don't worry about it. We've gone to the next one. Thanks. Don't worry, Louise. We're going to get you out. How are we going to get her out? Maybe we should smoke her out. Louise, are you sure there isn't something down there you can use to climb out? Oh, wait. Here's a grappling hook. Oh, ho, ho. And here's an escalator. Silly me. We're about to die, Louise. Do you really want your last words to be sarcastic? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, well, if anybody watching this, yes, Sans is going to be getting a big upgrade soon. I'm going to be getting an actual fuzzy hoodie. So, you know, to finally finish him up. But um, that video is an example of just listening to audio and thinking of the first character that comes to mind. Because that's generally what a bunch of my TikToks are. It's just me listening to an audio and thinking of a character that it fits. So I heard that video, that audio, and the first character that popped to mind was Sans. This audio works for Sans. It makes sense for Sans. I'm going to use it for Sans. And that video did it very, very well. So it proves the point that sometimes finding the right audio is about just listening to it and figuring out who this fits, like what part you have to play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, people really actually enjoy how my Sans has the blue highlights around the eyes and on the eyelids. Yeah. Which, you know, it's a nice addition I made. Is that it? Uh, yeah, that's all the videos that we're going to be wow. showing for today. 
Um, <laughs> but and if you want to see any more of his videos, go to his TikTok page as well. That's right. Um, the next question on my side is going to be, who is your biggest inspiration on or off TikTok slash musically? Hmm. Definitely always going to be... Gosh, that's tough. That legitimately is a tough question because there's been a, there's a lot of great creators on TikTok mm-hmm. who have inspired me, even though I don't try to take directly from the cosplays they've done because I want to do my own style. Yeah. Yeah, but... You know, sometimes you'll look at one of my cosplays and you can see some inspiration from other people. Like, for example, Sans in the last video you showed, the colorful highlights and stuff. Um, edgy cosplays, who does some amazing skeleton in cosplays from the various Undertale universes. That was one inspiration for it. Another inspiration was Lovey Dove cosplay, who also does like colored highlights. On her skeleton, on her Undertale skeleton in cosplays, so that's one inspiration. Another one is the aforementioned Nightbear cosplay and my Golden Freddy cosplay, which are inspired by Sam or Awkward Turtle, who does Golden Bonnie, and she does him with like the suit vest and just the colored suit and all of that. So, while some cosplayers have inspired me. I don't actually try to imitate someone. I just try to develop my own style. So, you know. But there are cosplayers that have inspired me. Yeah. Brandon Tack, Rain Emery. Rain Emery is an amazing cosplayer who does all, makes all of her cosplays by herself, which is fantastic. The aforementioned Mill Creates, who does amazing prosthetic work on a lot of her cosplays. And many more that aren't coming to my head right now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Next question from my side is do the content you make that you like the best get the most attention or are they just the ones that surprise you? It's always the content I always like is generally the content that doesn't do the best. Yeah. Like the first video you showed, the circus baby duet, um, before, I just intended for that to be filler. Just like the Mike Schmidt video. But then it just blew up, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? Another example, which is also another Michael Apton video for some reason, I did with... Leave Mo- I think Motor Ship. I think I'm getting the name wrong, but it would be pretty easy to find because it's literally my most viewed video at like over 800,000 views last I checked. And it's nothing special. It's just me as Mike Afton just throwing up a mask that isn't even a Freddy mask. It's just like a normal skeleton mask. And there, Toy Bind just walking away in the did a full 180 audio. And you know, I never particularly liked that one because it didn't seem hilarious. But for some reason, over 800,000 people thought it was the most hilarious thing they'd ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always the stuff that I don't really see as going anywhere that surprises me and just blows up all of a sudden. Now, that's not to say all of the videos that have blown up on my page, I've... (sighs) Sorry, I had brain fart there. I was not to say that video, that there were explosive videos that I enjoyed making. Ah, Dana, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. There are videos that I enjoyed making that did blow up and become successful. That's what I'm trying to say. There we go. Like, yeah, like earlier this year, I made a video when my friend Wolf Allen came down to visit using the Call Me Sage audio. And it was just like the joke of when your best friend works at Walmart for a long time. And I really enjoyed doing that video because, you know, it was very hilarious and a lot of great moments in it. I've made it with my best friend, so of course I'm going to like it. And it did very well. So, you know, there is stuff that I enjoyed making 
that does do extremely well. But it's always the stuff that I don't expect to be popular that surprises me. Yeah. Makes sense. It's right. generally right. the filler videos, as I've said, that always become the best. Right. Makes sense. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's my, oh, it's my turn. I'm sorry. Bra uh, this is cooking my brain. I'm sorry. Um, then take it off. Uh, then I have messed up hair. <laughs> oh, my God. You can um, but the... <laughs> there we go. Just... Um, but the next question is going to be coming from a past guest. Hmm. A Harley F. Quinn. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm oh. getting the right mindset for this. <clears throat> what are those? <laughs> I don't know. What are those? I don't know. What are those? I don't know. What are those? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I'm like a random question to ask in the middle of an interview, just like doing all these questions. And I'm actually really liking the answer, and then it's just like, what are those? Just pull a dead and me not, me not know. And it's like, yeah. Excuse what, me? What year are we in? Yeah. What year are we in? Uh, okay. I guess I'll do, I guess I'll do a past guest question. Um, this is one is from our buddy Chris, aka Mr. Zoom. Bacon. Bacon, question mark? Mm, bacon. I like bacon. Bacon's delicious. It's yummy. Great on burgers. Great with eggs. So bacon, exclamation mark, with a thumbs up. Awesome. Awesome. How about so, bacon with peanut butter? You skipped a question. You're supposed <laughs> no. to ask no. peanut butter, question mark, and no, then you I ask don't, about the bacon and peanut butter. I don't think bacon and peanut butter works. Just saying. Makes sense. I just want to get his reaction to that. That's the only reason why I did it. Uh, you have to pull something really random out to surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, talking about dead memes, here's one that might not that talks about memes. This one's coming from a also past guest, a Ken Ken Ocelot. Favorite meme. Favorite meme. Mm. Yes. Interesting. Um, my favorite meme is definitely Weed Eater. You've probably seen that meme floating around from VeggieTales. I grew up watching VeggieTales. It's an amazing show. You know, still holds up to this day. And I was surprised to find that it's actually still beloved by people to this day, even with a bunch of memes about it. The Weed Eater one is definitely the best because in the future, humor will be randomly generated. You know, that just applies to any kind of situation. Just like when you're trying to explain some kind of weird thing to someone, just like, this doesn't make any sense. What's so funny about it? It's just like, weed eater. What does that mean? Weed eater. It's unexpected. And you don't know why it's funny, but that's what makes it funny. Yeah. Like, how many, like, were you guys expecting the John Scapemo's clotheslining gag at the start of this interview? Were you expecting yeah. that response? Exactly. Uh -huh. And that's what um, made it funny. That's my kind of humor. Right? Yeah. The unexpected. Yeah. You never know what is going to happen. French fries! <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. I love it. That's awesome. Love it. I love it. That's, that's the best kind of humor, the unexpected. Like walking around with a giant jug of water just casually drinking it. That's cool. funny because it's unexpected. But unexpected humor only works when you play it straight. Yeah. When you don't wink to the audience, because that's not the kind of humor that it's supposed to be. And it's just like, so what? Yeah. yeah. That's my favorite meme because it embodies my favorite kind of humor. Random, out of nowhere humor. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. yeah. When you when you do like the when you do the blink to the audience, it kind of like ruins the joke that you're trying to perform, and then just lose interest. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Also. Same thing applies with puns as well. When you're not intentionally trying to say a pun, it's funny. It's it's acceptable. But when you're making it intentionally, it's not funny and it's cringeworthy. Don't even think about it, Sprinny. 
I, I smell your deviousness from here. <laughs> yeah, most of our episodes are pun based. So, <laughs> okay, so I finally have someone who does not want to see a pun coming out of this guy's face, out of this guy's mouth. Yes, he, he helped me make his thumbnail, so that's fine. Mm. He, he helped me with the name of it. That's fine. Um, um, um but and like, I, like I said, I dealt this guy for a year and a half. It still annoys me to this day. <laughs> puns. Um, no. Yes. You love the puns. You. There are some of them I like, but not all of it. Okay. Anywho. Um, Dennis, I believe it's your turn because I asked the meme question. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Someone texted me and I don't know why. But anyway, I'm doing it with my question. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, I'll actually actually ask one more guest question. And that is from Shannon Cuthers on Instagram. Um, if you were in a movie and was co-starring with who would it be and what would it be the movie about? Ooh, that's that's actually an easy one. Um, I definitely would want to co-star with Chris Pratt. Yeah. That dude uh... is actually wait, no, no, no. I want to co-star with Kevin Hart. That guy is funny. I That's love good. Kevin Hart. That guy is funny. And it would, I would, and it would definitely have to be for a Jumanji movie because then not only am I guest starring with Kevin Hart, but also Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Karen Gillian and Jack Black. Yeah. So once again, I'll take the, las- I'll have the lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have the option that gives me all the options. You found oh, yeah. the loophole. Um, yeah. Found the loophole. So, the next question is coming from a fan on Instagram, who may or may not still be a fan. <laughs> the other one who made this question say, <laughs> may not be still be a fan. If and you're still a fan, say yes in the comments. Yes. From a Charlie underscore Aronson 99 on Instagram. I don't think I said that part. What is one thing you regret doing on camera? What is one thing I regret doing on camera? Hmm. I'm not sure. I haven't really done anything regrettable yet. And I don't think I will do anything regrettable. Because most of the stuff that I do is, of course, you know, deliberate thoughts, just thought out beforehand, like, is this a good idea to do? I've made regrettable comments on, like, TikTok and stuff, but I've always generally been, been quick to apologize if someone you know, is upset by it because that was never my intention, but I do regret making those comments, but I've never done anything regrettable on camera. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I know, I know, I'm sorry. All that stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go... I'll go to my... Um, if from, who from TikTok would you like to collaborate in real life? Oh, no! You just <laughs> asked... The biggest stumping question of all time. The person at the top of my list that I want to collaborate with the most is definitely Mill Creates. And I would definitely want to do Sans and Papyrus with her because I would actually enjoy, I actually think it would be cool well, to try out one of her really awesome skeleton prosthetics that she actually made and makes work. With her characters. Oh, that would be really cool to try out. So she would definitely be one person I want to collaborate with. I definitely want to collaborate with Mythicality Cosplays. Because, as I said, they were the ones who got me on the TikTok. And so, of course, they're on the really top of wanting for collaboration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are a very nice person, I have to say. They really are. Oh, yeah. Uh, If you want to go see that episode... (laughs) <laughs> um, on our channel I've already advertised that episode you don't have to yeah, do it again we have to advertise every five minutes uh, <laughs> um, but, like contract. I'm calling my lawyers again again? no we have to call lawyers again I don't know what we're definitely we're suing money. We. Uh, we're not suing we're not? okay thank you <laughs> we already have all of our money from the last suing 
<laughs> I'm still using I'm still using this as a fake phone when my actual cell phone's right here. <laughs> that. It works. I mean, hey, it works with the comedy. Um, but now we're going to be going into the final, technically, four questions. Ooh. The first one is going to be, do you have any questions, comments, or concerns for me as an individual, Dennis as an individual, or about the show as a whole? Um, I just have one question, and it's addressed to any person watching this, and just about not to subscribe. Why are you not subscribed to these guys? Hear me out for a second. These guys have managed to secure some very top quality TikTokers. Some of them that I actually know. In fact, these guys have been able to nail down random encounters. Yes, the same random encounters made the awesome FNAF The Musical, which audio I've used abundantly on TikTok, along with thousands of other TikTokers. Yes, so if you're not subscribed to these guys, you're missing out entirely. Besides that, no, not really. Quite enjoyed this. For well, first time being interviewed about TikTok, you guys really made it enjoyable. Well, thank you. We, we thank you. Perfect. No problem. We did it for a year and a half. So. Yeah. Hopefully Excellent. we know how to do this. Um, Hopefully. I, I, ho I hope so. It's been two years. We started in December, so. December, yeah. end of December, early January. So, yeah. yeah so, it's, it's been two like years birthday. now. Yeah. Somewhere like yes. birthday. Only a few months. But the next question is going to be, would you ever like to come back to the show? Oh, heck yeah. I'd, I'd love to come back. Awesome. Like I said, you guys <laughs> pulled this off very professionally. And you deserve way more than 300 subscribers. Yeah. So, of course, I would love to come back on the show. Awesome. Yeah. Um... The next question is, who would you like to see on the show in the future? Not saying next, because we already have that one scheduled. <laughs> oh, spoilers, because I already suggested them to you on Instagram. I'd love right, to see right. Aqua Turtle, a.k.a. Sam, on the show. Not only is she an amazing cosplayer who's done a lot of great FNAF stuff and Ultron and Attack on Titan and other great cosplays, but she's also a friend of mine. Like, we've gotten gotten to know each other, and she's really great cosplayer and a really great person. And even though she's on a break from TikTok at the moment, I think she's definitely someone you're going to want to track down and nail down an interview with. Uh, yeah. Well, we, the will we will definitely send out an invitation to her as probably as soon as this interview is over. <laughs> um. The next question is going to be... The last question, actually. Uh, yes, the last question. Thank you, Dennis. Oh, oh. Um, is going to be... Very serious question. Do you have any questions for a future guest? No, not really. Don't really have any questions, sadly. Well, that's All fine right. with us. That's fine. Yeah. If you ever okay. think of any, you know where to find me. Um, but... Thank you so much for being on the show, Noah. Thanks so, for having me. Um, thank you, Dennis, for being the co-host for today. Um, awesome, Dennis. And thank me. No, um, <laughs> thank you all for watching. If you would like to follow our lovely guest, all of their names will be in the description below. We are following them on YouTube, so it will be easier for you to find them on YouTube as well. Um, and all the other social media, if you're lazy, just, you know, <laughs> his face, through all of our following people. Who are following. And remember, subscribe to these guys if you want to see some more amazing interviews with TikTokers. And who knows, maybe PewDiePie, you never know, it could happen. <laughs> now, if you oh, excuse no. me, I gotta go close on Brad Pitt. He's right outside my apartment. I'll be right back. Peace out. Bye. And we hope you all have a nice day. And... We, and at least I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.